Hi there, you guys. Jacqueline Jacks here. So I'm excited because I just received these two limited edition sets and we're going to be reviewing them on the channel. The first one I'm planning on reviewing on this one is the Seascape set. It is so, so cool. It's a special edition um, set and I collect these by Schmincke because I just love them and I love the brand and I think that they make excellent products and uh, I've always liked to paint with them. If you haven't seen my review of the wooden box set, the 48 pack is awesome. I love it and I'm currently painting with it. These ones just arrived along with um, these two travel brushes from Jackson's that I got the Escoda size 6 Ultimo. So we're going to be painting with these today and the Escoda size 10 Ultimo. So kind of you're going to get a brush review and we're going to review these packs. Now I will um, open them so you can see them, but we're only in this video, we're actually going to test out and swatch the Seascape one. And then in the next video, we're going to test out and swatch the botanical set, but you are going to get a quick review on both of the sets as an open box on this video. So you guys ready to go? I'm so excited to get started. All right, hang on. Let's go and uh, let's get into it. So here we are back in the studio and I am so ready to sit down, take my little seat here and just have a coffee and relax. Let's get my microphone close to me. Um, so Schmincke usually has black sets. And um, I think the most incredible thing about the limited edition sets, I mean, they make limited edition sets in the classic Schminky tin, which I have actually converted this one into um, just my own little sketching kind of travel set. I just took the rails out, you know, and you can pretty much do whatever you want with them. If you take care of them, they actually will maintain a pretty nice value if you ever did want to resell them. But I don't really resell them. However, with that being said, I did order two extras of these. So there's an extra set uh, for Christmas for either gifts or I'll just uh, make them available on my website to my students at JacquelineJacks.com. And I got extra travel brushes too. This is the Escoda size 10 Ultimo travel brush, which I've been dying to, um, to sample and you know, you, a lot of you have been talking to me about which brushes you really want to get. So I love these travel brushes. I think they're really well made. We're going to put them in water right now so that I can paint with them. Escoda size six Ultimo is the other one. I have Versatile coming. I have, um, you know, those limited edition sets like the green and the black coming. I even have an extra set for Christmas gifts. So whether I give them away as Christmas gifts or end up making them available to you guys on my website at Christmas time, we will see. So um, this is the limited edition Schminka Hordum or Schminky Hordum special edition Seascape set. Now, one thing that is incredible about these sets is the silver tin. So if you've ever looked at limited edition sets, usually they'll do something maybe at Christmas time where they have um, a color or something going on here. And that's really, really incredible. But I loved this tin. This silver tin is just beautiful to me. It's so, so pretty. It's got the logo in blue. Open it up and it has um, kind of a special interior. You know, it comes with a traditional care card on how to swatch. Um, it also comes with a little swatch card. Uh, so if you did want to put this in, you could cut it down and probably fit it. But I went ahead and made my own, which you can do this way or this way, which we're going to paint today, actually. And then I made a larger thing where we could just kind of see the colors dancing on the paper. And I think that that's going to be even more fun to see. I typically don't really use these cards that come with it. I always make my own and just kind of slide them in there. Maybe put even um, like some, uh, there's magnetic tape that you can put on the back and they will fit right in there. So opening it up, it's got a really unique, interesting design. Some of you had commented that they didn't roll the edge of this bottom tray like they rolled the top tray. So you can see they've rolled this part so it's not sharp. 
which makes sense. Uh, whether they needed to roll this part, I don't really know that they did because it kind of just fits perfectly and I don't have any risk of cutting myself. It's not that sharp. So people have said, why didn't they roll it? Let's take a look at a traditional tin and see if they designed it any differently. No, they didn't. It The rolled edge is on the leaf, but this, these edges are never rolled. I, I never see them rolled. So why a lot of people are mentioning that, I, I really don't know, because I haven't ever seen them rolled on the base. But it does have rails. You can take this piece out if you want to just fill it with all your favorite colors. You could put some magnets on the bottom of your, um, like this. Do I have them with magnets? No, I don't. I thought I did. You could put some magnets on the bottom and then just drop them in and literally they'll stay, they'll stay put. Or you can use the tray that came. I, for right now, I love the tray that came. I'm gonna keep them as um, half pans and I'm gonna add probably maybe even a couple of full pans or half pans, depending on what colors I feel that this is missing. I feel right away, it definitely needs a yellow. So we're definitely gonna put a yellow in there. <laughs> maybe like a cool yellow or a warm yellow. I don't know until I start painting and maybe a sunrise color. So perhaps a carmine would be really, really nice addition to this set. But aside from that, I don't think you're going to need much of anything else. We're going to take the wrappers off in just a second and uh, swatch this out. So what colors come with it? We're going to go through the colors really, really uh, in depth in just a second when we swatch this out really quick before we get started with swatching that. Here is the botanical set. This is the other limited edition set that they have to offer. Again, it's in this beautiful tin. And no, I'm not getting paid for advertising. I spent my own money on this. <laughs> and I love them. I'm just so excited. Um, I love these curated sets. The value of the curated sets, although I love uh, full pans primarily. But this is so adorable to sit and paint with. This to me is just so easy. And when I have like, like typically my little travel setup looks like this. I have a previously used, um, this is just a case that a block of paper came in and I loved it because it was really made well. So I turned it into my own travel sketchbook with my own paper just by folding and clipping. And so then it lays flat. This is like absolutely perfect for that. So I could literally just add this clip here or not, you know, and then I'm good to go. So this is going to probably be something I'll be able to use. This is what I'm currently using, which is my own um, little self-made out of a uh, out of an old pencil tin. <laughs> it was made of a pencil tin, but it really, really works. It works out so well. I can't even tell you because it's so slim and it just slips into anything. So that's typically what I'm using. I could totally use this. I think this is just awesome. It's just beautiful and hard not to use, right? Rather than like custom made tin. So I think, um, you know, just what you feel like painting today, whether it's going to be this or the blue, just grab this, grab your sketchbook and you're good to go. The colors in here uh, will be on the next video. They have a beautiful range of colors. I could totally see these being like florals and botanicals. I mean, you're really good to go. I don't see any really mi big missing things. It does lean a little bit more on the pinks. I haven't swatched them out yet, so I'm going to have to see if Permanent Carmine, I know that that's going to give you just those beautiful, beautiful colors, right? It's just going to do everything that you need. But why they didn't put, I mean, they have a Saturn red, which in the swatch looks orange, but why they didn't put like a scarlet red, you know, like from this set, this scarlet red or the cadmium red would have been a really nice addition to the set. So possibly I will be like adding a scarlet red or the cadmium red. Um, even, yeah, not the orange, not transparent orange because transparent orange isn't as great with light fast as this is, but I could see where like a blue red might be necessary in this kit, but we'll see when we swatch it out. Just look out for that video because I'm going to do that one next. Okay, so let's put this away. I will get all these wrappers off and we'll come back and swatch. So magically 
Just wait a second. Hang on. And we're back. That's right. Okay, we got them all done. I'm saving the little wrappers because I always um, take some like glue and I end up creating charts like this of the box sets and limited edition tins that I get. And I find that they're really helpful because they have the pigment information. So it's kind of like my own little collection of uh, really, really nice watches, you know, outside of what I normally do. But um, they're really helpful to do that way. So you might want to save the uh, little wrappers for that reason and be careful. Okay, so I've got the brushes washed out. They look amazing. I can't wait to try these. I do have Ultimo brushes but I have not tried the round size 10 or the round size six. Really, really well made, I have to say. I love the weight of this tube and it's plenty big to get it back in there. Um, I'm really, really loving the way this feels too. It's slightly weighted, but they're not too heavy. I would probably end up painting with these an awful lot even in the studio. So in any case, let's go ahead and get a little water on these and see how quickly they wet. I cannot wait to see how these are. I mean, these are right out of the box, right? So we're going to see. So as far as colors, um, I'm going to read them out really quick. So we have titanium white, ice blue, which is a limited edition color. I hear that a lot of times these limited edition colors come out of the factory when they have remains left and they create a color that will, they will never have again. And that's a way for them not to be wasteful. Um, so these limited edition colors are really fun when they come out. And I always support the company by trying to get them or, you know, bring them in maybe in tubes if they have them. Cobalt Azure, Helio Cerulean, Prussian Cobalt Cerulean, Payne's Gray Bluish, which I just heard about for the first time in this set, which is gorgeous. Indigo, Dark Blue, French Ultra, Cobalt Blue Light, and Phalo Sapphire. Now, the great thing is they've left you with one, two, three, four, five, six empty spots. Or, I mean, like, literally, you could put all a ton more paint in here. So, when you're painting your seascapes, uh, there's a possibility you could need, like, a carmine or a red, you know, so just to maybe even, um, maybe even, I don't know, like a purple or something, you know what I mean? Just to, or you probably would get the purple if you use magenta or the carmine. Like if I got permanent carmine and I added it to this set, then that would be a nice combination. And I think maybe just like either a lemon or a cad yellow. I'm feeling cad yellow. Transparent yellow would also be really fun to have in this set. But let's just, you know, stick to something maybe that I think you might have already. You know, you might not have transparent yellow, which has a little more um, like different. It kind of reminds me of the nickel azo yellow, which is one of my favorites. But in any case, let's just keep it really clean and let these do what they want. So. Oh my gosh, it would re wet so quickly. That's amazing. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit of water to my brush. The Ultimo brush holds a ton of water. It would be equivalent to the Princeton Neptune brush series, which holds a lot of water, but I feel like this is actually a little bit better quality. Um, they've been, I've noticed that a lot of sets are adding white and you're always asking why. <laughs> well, I'm gonna show you why because when you have white, you actually can get some really interesting um, pastel versions of the colors. And that's never a bad thing. You know what I mean? So we're just going to put that in there. And that's probably why they've added white. And that's where they've come up with this nice, beautiful ice blue. Ice blue is very opaque, so it obviously has some white in it. I think it's just intriguing and gorgeous. I'm really, really thrilled with it. And I could see using this so much, um, either as a layer over or, you know, I mean, it's got an, it doesn't have a lot of transparency. You can see if you move it around a little bit with your water, depending on how much water you add, there are some things you can do to it, you know? 
this is a nice big space here so that we can see um, what the colors actually do when you have a lot of water. I've been wanting to play with some of these tapes for a little while. <laughs> Let's just paint the white. Not that you really need to swatch white, but I guess the value of swatching white would just be to have a black line there so that you could see um, how transparent the white actually is. I mean, white would be completely useless if it was transparent though, wouldn't it? This is cobalt azure. Ooh, that's gorgeous. Oh, kind of semi-transparent. Beautiful. Wow. That's, that's just beautiful. Yeah, I love that color. I think I will use this for swatching. Let's just give it a little more here just to see. Oof. I'm going to start a little play on some of these colors over here so they can dance around together. We'll see what we end up with. So this is a really beautiful blue for skies. I could see this one being um, something you layer, you know, because it's not like so transparent. It almost feels like it's got some white in it, the cobalt azure. It's really pretty though. And mixed with the ice blue, it kind of gives you, I don't know, like a little bit different tone. And I like that, it's really pretty. But as far as getting a lot of the color, this one, you really do have to load your brush, um, maybe not have as much water to get the full color weight on it. So in order for me to get a lot of color, let's just put it on dry paper over here. Dry my brush off a little bit, because literally, yeah, it's just one of those colors. It's, it's a beautiful sky blue that like isn't meant to be really, really dark. I'm looking for it to be different, but you have to layer it. Beautiful color. Okay, so the next one is Helio Cerulean. I'm really familiar with this um, color. I love it. I actually use it for everything. Skies, I make greens out of it. You can see how beautiful it, the color is. And you really don't. This is one of those colors that I always feel like if there's one blue that I have in a palette, it's just going to be this. I don't really need anything else past this, as you can tell. <laughs> it really does everything and so much more. The brilliance of it, the blue, it's just, it's so pretty. And it's definitely going to take over the page. You know, you don't need a lot of it. So you can see adding it in here. It's just going to take, it just takes over everything beautiful. Oh, this is so nice already. I love it. Okay, next Prussian. I love a good Prussian. Ugh, rich, warm, just gorgeous. I just dipped on this room. Yeah, it's a beautiful Prussian. Oh, I said I was going to paint with this one right for the bottom. It's because it's got a lot more water. This is a great brush. I don't, okay, so so far with the Ultimo brushes, for those of you who um, like a combination of a brush that can do a great wash and have enough water in your brush, um, this is a great brush for you. If you don't like to use a lot of water and it scares you, I mean, you can always dry it off. Like what I'm doing is I'm just kind of taking some of the water off on my towel. If a lot of water scares you, that makes watercolor really hard to paint. But 
like you should get used to a brush like this. And if you're going to get one that has a lot of water, I used to love the Neptune for that. The Neptune series is amazing. But honestly, Jackson's just had a sale on these and these are beautiful brushes. They are. I would have to say that now my new um, go-to for water brush is the Escoda Ultimo, even though I literally have the full range of my Neptune and I love my Neptune brushes. Don't get me wrong, but they're going to take second fiddle right now to these. I'm going to have to do like a brush challenge for me to really like wrap my head around why I like this brush more, but just right now I just do. <laughs> I will do a brush challenge though once all these brushes come in because I've got a lot of them coming um, so that I can test everything out for you guys. Cobalt Cerulean. Let's see how different this one is. Oh, interesting. So this Cobalt Cerulean kind of reminds me of Cerulean. Okay, so this reminds me a lot of Daniel Smith's Cerulean... What is it? Chromium. Yeah, because it's it's very opaque and it's very dark, like this really beautiful, really brilliant, brilliant uh, cobalt mixed with cerulean. Yeah, it's very much like the Daniel Smith um, cerulean chromium. I also wanted to just uh, mention as well, guys, that Professional watercolor paints, unless they speak otherwise, are toxic to animals and humans. So please don't stick your brushes into your mouth. <laughs> Be very careful. Really pretty going to go ahead and add some water to that white because I just don't want it like just hanging out there by itself like a big white spot. <laughs> All right, next. Indigo. Ugh. I'm such the perfect person to sample blues. You know what I mean? I really am. No, oh, it's Payne's Gray. Yeah, I was going to say Payne's Gray. I didn't leave any space here. Oh, that's beautiful. Payne's Gray Bluish. This is the second time I have experienced this color. I never bought it in individual tubes from Schmincke, and I just recently got it in this big set. And you know what? It is incredible. I really, really like it. It's beautiful. Let's play with it a little bit. I want to see how it dries, you know? Look at how deep it is. And then this, see what this water brush does, how it just, now this is the difference when you have a really good brush. And I was having this conversation um, before with one of the people in my group. And don't forget, guys, go to my group page on uh, Facebook. You will love it. We share projects and I can see what you're working on and you can get, um, you can get like applause for all of your good work, <laughs> you know? So we were, I was trying to explain that a good brush in watercolor is really everything. Now, of course, it's really up to the artist to do a good job, right? Because you can use anything. You use a twig. You can use your fingers to paint. But like a great brush that adds the right amount of water for the size of your paper is really important. And these are, this just a size 10 and a size 6 Ultimo, the way that they have shaped this brush and made it to a point, I don't think I would really need anything else. So if I were going to start with a brush, I wouldn't shy away. I wouldn't just go with Versatile. Versatile is a good brush as well. It just holds less water. With the way that this actually allows you to do some, you know, details, I wouldn't shy away from it. I really wouldn't. I would, I would go ahead and go for it so that you have brushes that have enough water in them. You know what I mean? Look at how pretty that is. So the six, because it's a small brush in the Ultimo, it doesn't hold a ton of water. So you would have to re-wet it again 
you know, to do that. But the 10 would give you everything that you needed in a brush because it literally has a point. So I can get some nice thin lines. You know, you just got to get used to it, but I can definitely get some lines. And it also has the availability of that really nice watery, you know, where it can see that's the same amount of paint and literally I can wash it down and create really beautiful washes, you know, with it, which is what I'm doing here. And it, it will hold enough. It really will. Will it be like an insane amount of water? No, this one doesn't get carried away. It's somewhere in between, you know, they do have another, um, brush that holds even more water. That is, is even more like, um, natural hair, but I don't think you need it. I think Ultimo is going to last a long time because it's not, and it doesn't really fray because it's synthetic instead of real animal hair. Like the, um, these brushes that came with this 48 wooden box set are from Da Vinci. And a lot of you asked me about the brushes because you're like, my brushes are frayed, but they're supposed to be because literally they are, um, they're real hair. These are a mix of red sable, like three different kinds of natural animal hair brushes. So they won't really ever have the kind of point that a synthetic brush will have, but they hold a ton of water and they're really neat to paint with. But would I recommend beginners get these brushes? No, I wouldn't. I would recommend beginners get a brush that holds enough water, doesn't get carried away from you and has a point like that, that will keep its shape for longer periods of time, because you're not going to be investing a ton of money in brushes. Um, you, you want to try and pick and choose until you really commit to this medium and, you know, if you really love it and if you're going to spend a lifetime with it, then great. Collect all these goodies over time, you know? All right. Here's the dark blue. Oh, that's really rich. Crazy, huh? It's like a navy blue. Really pretty. Yeah, we need that. I mean, this palette is all about convenience. Um, they're basically giving you every single blue, you know, that you could ever want to paint with in one palette, which is really fun. Because, you know, not everybody's going to be a colorist in watercolor. So you're not all going to be able to mix your own blues. Can you get all these blues? Well, you can't get Helio from anything. You have to start with Helio. You can you can get cobalt azure from mixing white probably with helio, you know. You can get uh, cobalt cerulean from mixing white, you know, that you can do that. You can get a prussian, you can get a dark blue. I don't know, it depends on how this dark blue dries. The the Payne's gray is a very neutral. It dries like Payne's gray. It dries matte, like this kind of dusty matte finish. Um all of them is that I've ever used Payne's grays, they've all dried like that. So you just have to be aware of your colors. Oh, that's beautiful. They're French ultra. Yes. And it's not finest. I don't think it's French ultra. The French ultra and the French ultra finest are a little bit different because one is granulating and the other is not. And this looks like, yeah, it's definitely the granulating one. French ultra finest is, um, I wonder if it's in this set. I don't think so. I have it though somewhere. It's a smoother French Ultra. Oh, you know what? French Ultra Finest is in the botanical set. Yes, in the botanical set. Probably because some people won't want granulation when they do their flowers. So you have that option. I had somebody ask me the other day, did I use the front? No. I had somebody ask me the other day, why does anybody even want French Ultra Finest anymore? And I'm like, well, because, you know, there's some applications where you, you're not going to need granulation, nor do you want it. And so there you go. Having an Ultra that doesn't have a heavy granulation is probably a good idea in some cultures. <laughs> not mine. I don't need it. I would rather have the granulation and have fun with the granulation, but 
So I'm just going to roll this over just so that I have that nice little combination. And let's add some water. This is going to look so cool. I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I actually was lazy about um, ordering the tape. It's just, this is just quarter inch tape, painter's tape. But I've been wanting to do swatches like this for a while. I think I want a little bit more of this cobalt azure over here. See how like almost transparent it is? You have to really dig in there and get a lot of the color. But it is very pretty and it'll be perfect for skies. I think that's probably, I love it. It's really beautiful. I would, I would say it's the one maybe unnecessary color in here, but you know what? No, it's just so nice. <laughs> it's so nice. They did a good job. I love curated sets for that reason. Um, you know, if you don't have uh, any money at all to spend on your hobbies, but you want to paint, sometimes a curated set is a great way to start depending on what kind of things you like to paint, you know? And I would say this blue set is a great way to start. And then, like I said, I just gave you um, the other colors that you would want to add to it. And in a second, I'm gonna show you why. Okay, so this is Cobalt Blue Light. Cobalt Blue is amazing. It goes with everything and it's a great mixing color. It's a true, true color. It usually is a pure pigment. I haven't checked the pigment information on these yet, but I should because you're here. So I'm mixing this with a little bit of the other colors so that we can see what happens to it. Beautiful. And I think I'm going to take it a little bit in here into this wash just for fun build it up. This is going to look so cool when we remove the tape. This is a good way actually to do your swatches, you know, just do something like this instead. I did roses for, um, for this one. I have them stuck to the back of the, the wood set, but I did these roses. There's actually a whole video of how to do them and labeled them out and that's what I'm like looking at instead of the traditional swatches for my wooden box set. They're really fun to do but this would be really fun to do too. You could you know just do a big sheet and then put one two three or like actually write the the name of the color on them. So the last color is phalo sapphire. Did you see how easy these were? They just re-wet. I just put a drop on them and that was all I needed. I don't even have a lot on my brush. This sapphire is so brilliant. Wow. That is probably my new favorite blue. Holy cow. Makes me want to get out my jewelry. I have a gorgeous sapphire ring that I do not wear enough, and this just reminded me of it. This is so pretty. Wow, that sapphire is insane. Look, I'm like just going through and painting it everywhere. Jeez. It's just stunning. It's got a, a dark depth and wow. Oh, I have a new favorite color. So pretty. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and let the sapphire run. Let's just let it travel in here. Because I want to show you, if you add carmine, then you have this beautiful pink, and it makes a moody purple. So you can see where, like, you know, like a maroon, if you add more sapphire or cerulean to it, you'll get a really beautiful so you're starting to get the darker, the darker blue. 
you get this beautiful moody maroon you can get a purple there's so many shades you can get from just having um a carmine in there you know okay if you have oops i need some clean okay if you have cadmium yellow and that is part of your set then of course adding a little bit of either red to it is going to make an orange but if you add a little like um helio cerulean you're going to get a gorgeous gorgeous green isn't that great if you add a little bit of french ultra then you'll get even a different green so this one color is really all you need because it will create a multitude of different greens to add to your seascapes or even if you wanted to add a little bit of um, you know some botanicals too so if you add the french ultra you're going to go more in this um, tealy kind of really deeper moodier color right warmer colors if you add the cerulean to the cad yellow then you're going to get really bright bright greens and then finally if you wanted to do a scarlet i don't even know where i put this here so if you add scarlet to this set as your extra color and this is kind of cool that they let you choose you know because you could just take it from another set or add whatever you wanted so if I'm gonna add French Ultra then you're gonna get those beautiful beautiful purples look how lovely that is so pretty see the shades really shade beautiful shades of purple if again I'll just take the cerulean because it's um, it's so easy to mix completely different shade see and that's mixing right on paper um, if you want a little something more on the pinker side then just go a little lighter on your on your mixing color this is what being a good colorist will show you you just have to experiment add a little more red and you're going to get a little more pink in your tone see what i mean same with the carmine if i add a lot of carmine and say I take the French Ultra. If I don't, if I add little bits of French Ultra, I get more pink tones. If I add heavier French Ultra, then I get darker pinky purple tones. If I go even more French Ultra, then you're going to get more of the blue. Uh, like lavender tones so you can see how you can literally <laughs> you can expand your colors just by adding a basic you know what I mean to your range and you're gonna have you just have unlimited um, stuff to play with so if I take this sapphire I would say mix the sapphire with the carmine that's pretty you get like a really bright color if I mix more sapphire in then it's going to go more into the purple range like the blue purples look at all these colors you just literally you get so much I'm getting maroons so just you know literally fill up this whole page with with you just kind of sloshing through your colors this is so relaxing to do and you learn so much about what colors you actually have on your palette you know I mean just get a sheet of paper and use it as a palette and start just mixing things in 
Um, you'll learn so much, like I said, and you'll also be able to experiment just by filling the page. I mean, literally just fill it with color. It's so nice. Or you can create something like this even, you know, that's kind of fun to do. Um, but it just allows you to get used to your colors and you'll see which ones go to neutral, which ones create like just these really interesting grays, purples, you know what I mean? And they're fun to play with, really fun to play with. So that is, oh, that's beautiful. So that's my review of this set. Let's put these away. Scarlet goes over here. Carmine goes over here. They go back into their little homes. Cadmium yellow. So if you wanted to add, those are what I would recommend adding. Here is the seascape set. This was so, so nice. Should we remove the tape and see what we ended up having? See what this looks like. Oops. I guess I should have let it dry. <laughs> I'm really impatient with this stuff. Yeah, I should probably let it dry or, or be really, really careful. There we go. Over their wet spots, it it will tear the paper. So just kind of go a little more gingerly with it. This is fun though. So a recap of the blues. This this set has everything you could possibly need. It's got a beautiful tin. I like the tin in my hand. I like the square tin actually. Um, now that I have both, I kind of prefer the square tin. So when they make those, I definitely will pick them up. Uh, the price point of this right now on the sale, it's under a hundred dollars. If you don't get them when they first come out, the resale market on these can be as much as $250 uh, once they run out on a brand new tin. And there are collectors that definitely want to get their hands on these after market. So um, they'll, you know, you'll see a few kind of batting around out there. Not a lot, but a few after market, uh, mainly from sellers, maybe in Germany, Sweden, you know, in Europe really nice but um, as far as you just as for usage and just enjoying the colors definitely pick yourself up the seascape tin if you like the blues or if you like the florals as far as it being sharp no there's nothing really going on with this I, I can't imagine me cutting myself on this and if you look at all the tins they're always rolled on the palette area the mixing area and I haven't really seen any rolled in this area the colors are just beautiful. There's a lot of really neat darks. There's a lot going on with the colors. They're so, so pretty. Um, so that you get an idea of how beautiful this blue is. Let's just lift some of it off so you can see how moody and pretty this dark, it's like a dark navy blue. And then the indigo is very similar to it actually, but it's got a little more I don't know, maybe a little more greenish base. Oh, indigo is always funny. It's like blue jeans, you know, it kind of has a little bit of that green tinge to it. I always see the green in it anyway. And then Payne's gray bluish is really pretty. Why they needed all three of these, I'm not really sure because I don't know that Payne's gray bluish is necessary in this um, palette when you have an indigo and a dark blue. Like, there's so many blues. I mean, they did give you everything else, right? But wouldn't it have been have cool like if you did an ultraviolet there would have been really nice. Or like, I don't know if magenta, probably ultraviolet or, oh, you know what's missing in here? The cobalt. Yeah, that I would definitely add to this. This cobalt, that should have been in here. That should have been replacing the Payne's Gray. So I probably will add the Cobalt to this set for sure. Um, so let me build you a little bit of a set before I go. If I can get these out of my trays. What I would add ideally is, I have them all stuck in there. I would add Cobalt, definitely. 
cobalt turquoise. Um, like I said before, I would be adding a cad yellow. And I probably would do these in like small little pans because the big pans are not going to fit. Not for how many I want in here. Um, for the red, ooh, it's a toss up whether I want the, the red red or the carmine. I think, I mean, it's not really necessary to have a red in here. What I would do is, hmm, I mean, probably the carmine's a better thing, but here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thought. With the cad yellow, do I have any more sheets? The cad yellow, we're going to need, in some cases of a sunset, you're going to need a sunset color, right? So if I use this one, I get this really, really neat warm orange, right? That's really nice. Yeah, so I'm thinking of that as the priority um, to insert. If I use the permanent carmine, and I get a really pretty red, and well, it's like a pink, and then I get this kind of orange. So I guess what I would say to you is whichever one you feel you would be happier with and that makes the better shades for you, then use it, whether it be more the pink shade or more of the red shade. Both of them will fit into this kit because um, because there's so many different blues in here, you know, like there's warm blues and cool blues. So both would fit fine. I would say right now, just so that I show you this, why don't they, do, it's good that they don't come out that easily, but it's hard for this. And I just stuck my finger in it. Thank you. That's probably what I would add. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I would want in here, but no, I think that's good because if I mix any of the blues with the yellow, I'm going to get a range of greens. This is always a great color to have because it just, it just like highlights things. Um, if I mix this with the different blues, I'm going to get a range of different purples and moody maroons, which are great for sunsets and stuff. If there was any other color that I would add to here, because there's already cobalts and stuff, it might be ultra violet. That might be just the only other color that I would add. And that one is this one as a convenience color. Not to really mix with anything, but just to be able to kind of intermingle with the blues to pick up some of the, the beautiful warmth of, you know, that sometimes you see on the ocean as the sun is setting. I wouldn't use the manganese violet because it's so granulating that it makes it a little harder to work with. Magenta would also be a really good choice. If you didn't like the carmine, you could either do either one. Um, would I do an orange? No, not necessarily, but if you have room and you just want to put a convenient orange, cadmium red light would be a good choice. Uh, I wouldn't do transparent orange because it doesn't have as good of a light fast reading. Chromium orange hue would be better. And even cadmium yellow. No, because that doesn't have a great light fast rating either. Indian yellow, that might be a good one. Or Quin Gold, but then we're changing the palette entirely once you go Quin Gold. So probably just a clear yellow, a clear red, and then maybe just this cobalt because it's hard not to have that in a blue palette, you know? And that would be my custom choices to finish off this palette. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think. Also, let me know what you thought of the Ultimo brushes. And if that is something that you might consider getting, because I really, really like them. If you want to see me do brush challenges or paint challenges or anything else, let me know. Happy to do it. I've already messed up my color swatches, but that's okay because the messier, the better. I always say a really messy palette is a happy palette because that means it gets used and used so much. And... I will end the video right there. <laughs> okay, bye guys.